TU100 My Digital Life Sense and Sense Ability When programming with lists, we often want to do essentially the same thing to each item, such as entering items, displaying items and processing items. The sense blocks that implement loops, the repeat and so on, are just what's needed for this, allowing a program to loop through the items of a list and do the same thing to each one. So we'll now begin to look at how loops can be employed to operate on lists. This section concentrates on entering and accessing list items, for example, in order to display them. And in the next session, you'll look at processing list items. A common requirement is to access each item in a list in turn. In the previous programming exercise, you achieve this via a sequence of blocks, with the say blocks in this case, as you were accessing the items in order for them to be spoken by the sprite, with each individual item being accessed by an item block. In general, a more efficient way to access each list item, particularly if the list in question is long, is to use a loop. This next exercise illustrates this technique. So open project 35 and immediately save it with the underscore SOL. This program script is the same as that in the previous exercise, except for the creation of speech bubbles. In the previous program, this was done by a series of say blocks. In the current program, these have been replaced with a repeat block, whose jaws contain a single say block, as shown here. The program uses a variable position, whose value is set to one prior to the block repeat six. The role of a variable, such as position, is a vital one in looping through lists, enabling each loop to access a different list item. Run the program and try to describe how it results in each list item in turn being spoken. Single stepping through the program or running it in slow motion may help. When this program was created, the length of the list involved was known to be six. Accordingly, the repeat block has a value of six, so that six loops are carried out one for each item in the list. Sometimes, however, the length of a list is unknown when a program is created. Perhaps the intention is that when the program runs, the user will create their own list of indeterminate length, in which case the programmer doesn't know in advance how long the list will be and the length of the list cannot be specified explicitly in the program. In such a case, the block length of is required. When run, this block gives the length of the list selected from its drop-down menu, so the length of block can be used whenever the program needs to use a list length that's not known when the program is created. In fact, even when the length of a list is known, it's good practice to use the length of block rather than writing or hard coding a particular list length into a program. That way, if the program is amended at a later stage to involve a list of a different length, then the new list length will automatically be used. Drag a length of block from the variables palette and use it to replace the six in the input box of the repeat block. Run the program and check that its behavior is still the same. The blocks inside the repeat block's jaws are run six times. Each time, the current value of position, one in the first loop, specifies the position of the item to be accessed using the item of block and spoken using the say block. The change position by one block increments the value of position by one. So on the first loop through, the first item in the list is spoken by the sprite and position is set to two. Then on the second loop through, the second item in the list is spoken and position is set to three and so on. On the sixth loop through, the sixth item in the list is spoken and position is set to seven. This value of position has no subsequent effect since there are no more loops. Now modify the program so that the sprite speaks the items in the list in reverse order, that is starting with the last item and finishing with the first item. This will require two changes, to the block set position to one and to the block change position by one. The changes should involve using another length of block in order that the program continues to work with a list of any length. Save your project and run the program, checking that it works as required. Check whether it works with a list of a different length by inserting another add to block within the existing sequence of add to blocks and rerunning the program. You should have made two changes before the loop 
instead of setting position to 1, set position to the length of my CD list using the length of block. Decrement instead of increment the value of position by 1 in each loop by changing the 1 in the second input box of the change by block to minus 1. When the program is run, in the first loop, position has value equal to the length of my CD list, whatever that length happens to be, so the last item in the list is spoken first. In the second loop, position has equal value to one less than the length of my CD list, so the second to last item in the list is spoken, and so on until position has value one when the first item in the list is spoken. The completed program for this exercise can be found in Project 35 completed. In the next exercise, we'll first see how a loop can be used to enable the user to enter list items. Then we'll extend the program so that it accesses the data entered by the user.